Okay, so this one's actually a really important one for you to pay attention to, um, mainly because I've integrated some of the results here um, into the next lecture. So the lecture after um, finding the capacitance, I'll use some of the results to talk about the energy in a capacitor. Um, and that's mainly because I can't really give you the uh, energy of a parallel plate capacitor because I've asked you to find that in one of the problems. So I prefer to do everything with the parallel plate capacitor, but that's just not what we're going to, that's just not what can happen now. Um, in the future, obviously, I'll change that so that I do everything with the parallel plate capacitor and then um, you guys, the students, who I guess will not be you guys by definition, um, at least hopefully, um, you know, you'll do the, uh, the more interesting problems rather than the boring old problems that are in the book anyway. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have two concentric spherical shells uh, connected to a battery and uh, we're going to find the capacitance. Actually, you know, we don't really need the battery, but you know, it's good in, to put it in the representation because we do need to talk about the voltage to find the capacitance, right? So, um, so we have these two con concentric spherical shells. We want to find the capacitance. So, uh, that's exactly what we want to write in our identification part of the problem, right? Uh, we have given two concentric, meaning they have the same center, spherical shells. Okay, and so they have radii um, uh, we can call them R in and R out. That's what we'll do this time. And then we have, uh, we're going to char charge them up and find the capacitance. So, um, are charged by a battery. Okay, so the battery has a voltage V and they're charged to um, plus or minus Q. So remember we said anything we're going to do, we're going to just assume that there's, if this has to charge, um, this is connected to the negative terminal, so if this has a charge negative Q, this guy has a charge positive Q. All right. So um, then we want to find something, all right? And we want to find the capacitance. Of the system, and that's C. We're going to call that C, like we always do. Um, and so our concept here is the capacitance. And this is associated with one of the more difficult and um, scary equations that we use, which is Q is equal to C um, V or C delta V. C V will do fine for now. Okay. Um, and basically, we do need to worry a little bit about our setup. So I'll just talk a little bit about it, and that's just to say we want. The easiest thing is to set this up so that both spheres are at the origin. Both spheres centers. Are at the origin. Okay, so, so this is um, what we have to work with and it's not going to be exceedingly difficult, right? So um, we're going to have to worry about what is the um, potential. Uh, this is as far as I'm concerned to solve the problem for for a uh, this is a solved problem for any of our systems. Inside it's a constant and outside it's just like a point charge, right? 
So that's um, Q over four pi epsilon naught, one over uh, little r, right? The distance from the center. So uh, these, this is enough to tell us everything we need to know about the um, potentials. So let's go ahead with our strategy. Um, so, uh, you, you know, in class, I did the line interval to get from here to here, but we don't need to do that, right? All we have to do is really find the difference between the potential here and the potential there and set that equal to V, and we're perfectly fine. So what we want to do is we want to find the potential here and the potential there, which is a superposition of the constant potential from this guy and the changing potential from this guy. All right. So we need to, to do that, we need to find um, individual uh, potentials. Um, then we sum at uh, R in and R out. So we sum for both of those. Uh, that shouldn't take much space. So three, uh, we're going to go with finding the voltage. And it looks like we're already low on space. So we bring this up a little bit. Um, and that, that doesn't take long. So four, we'll find the capacitance. Okay, so this should be nice and simple. Again, we can use known quantities and sometimes that'll make life easier. We won't have to do all the integrals and other fun things that um, I sometimes do in class. Uh, and sometimes do on these, on these videos. But I mean, if you know something, then use it, right? I mean, that, that's how life works. So our... Uh, potential from from this guy here which is from the inner sphere not from not on the interior of the sphere so it's for the inner sphere um, is going to be uh, Q because this is positive over 4 pi epsilon naught right times 1 over R and phi from the outer sphere is going to be a constant, which is going to be the same potential as right here, which means it's going to be minus Q over four pi epsilon naught, one over R out. Okay, so that's what the potential would be here, just using the Coulomb potential, and then up here, um, it's going to be this. It's got to be the same thing, just because. It's going to, got to be the same thing just because it's constant throughout here. So there can't be any field on the inside, which means the potential is constant and the potential is, the, the potential does not have discontinuities. Okay, so uh, if we sum them up, we get uh, phi of r is equal to q over four pi epsilon naught, um, one over r minus one over r out, which means that, um, Phi of R in is equal to uh, Q over four pi epsilon naught, right? Uh, one over R in minus one over R out. And uh, phi of R out is equal to Q over four pi epsilon naught. Um, 1 over r out minus 1 over r out. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, we're nice and happy with that. So this tells us that phi at r out is 0. Everything cancels out. Um, just because the charge on these two things, on these two spheres, is the same. So now our voltage is just going to be this uh, phi of R in, um, which is going to be equal to Q over four pi epsilon naught, 
Um, usually better to um, rationalize things. So we have R out minus R in over four over um, the product R R out over R in. R out R in. Yeah. Okay, so this is our potential, and we want to find our capacitance. Um, should have just put it right under there, but I didn't. So the capacitance is equal to the charge over the voltage, which means we have a 4 pi epsilon naught uh, times R out times R in divided by the difference route minus RIN, R out minus R in. Bang, 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 bang. Everything's done. So that's really all you need to do to do this problem. It's not a um, excessively difficult one, right? And again, we use this come Friday, right? Do you need money? Come come Wednesday, Wednesday, the the day after fall break. All right. So I will see you the day after fall break, and. Um, Keep this in mind.